Gentlemen, you receive my instruction in the dressing room. I want a clean, clear fight, okay? Listen to my command at all time and protect yourself at all time. Good luck to both chickens. So here we go, a fairly reluctant touch of gloves right. there between each two. Referee for this one, Sean Robert Len. As our MC told us, experienced official from Monaco. The defending IBO champion is Sven Fornling. The WBA interim title is vacant. Fornling being introduced and walking first as a result of a coin toss that was held earlier in the day. So Fornling in the Swedish colours in the blue and gold and Bursal in the black and gold. With big fights, Ben, one thing I always find interesting is that from leaving the dressing room to the first bell, you're looking at at least 15 minutes. And Both fighters are bone dry. It's exactly what I was going to say. First thing that stood out for me, both fighters are bone dry. It was Fawling who was just trying to keep a little bit busy. He wasn't in the ring, just bouncing on the balls of his feet. But if they did get a sweat on in the dressing room, then it has long gone. Bursal is of the opinion, as is his trainer Dirk Jemski, who he's been with pretty much all the way through his career. They split for a brief spell. They think that the jab in this fight is, is what will win it for them. Well, one thing I notice with Bursal is his lead hand is what I call half and half. It's a poise that can almost look to lower the punch count, we punch count we spoke about earlier with Peter Caderu, but also the lead hand doesn't have to travel too far, as we saw there, just there. Lead hand doesn't have to travel too far to hit the target when you're throwing a jab. Just holds it out there. It's Falling who's taken the centre of the ring in this opening round so far, and Burzel just moving in quickly there, the head's almost coming together. He's always got quite a tight, tense look to him, Bozo. That's just how he fights. Yeah, they've got the tight shoulders. Probably just a little bit looser. Bosal just letting those hands go, didn't really take his feet with him, but he kept the, the gloves moving. And then just catches Fawning on the inside there with the, with the right hand, nothing too heavy. For the first thing that Fawning needs to learn to do is to defend that jab. He needs to take that jab away, otherwise he's going to have a long night ahead of him and his face is already starting to mark up. It is, around his left eye, some reddening. Bosal's had a good, strong final minute in this round. It's in his round, this opener. Bell goes, and they'll both be glad just to get that one in the books, I think. First three minutes down for these two. The judges are ringside, just handing in their slips to referee Jean Robert Lane, Dirk Zemski. Fawning just looked a gear or two behind there, and I think he paid the price for a, uh, whether it was a lack of a warm-up or, like you say, a long uh, ring entrance before the, the sound of the first belt. I think he just paid the price for it in that first round there. Yeah, let's go first. Wie gesagt, pass auf das Stoische auf. Ja, dass er da, wenn du dann so reinrammelst, er bleibt da doch wirklich stehen. Ja, dass er da nicht, dass er da noch, dass er da noch nicht, nicht dass er da nicht zu fest reinrammelst. Hast du ja auch nicht nötig. Ja, aber auch nicht zu viel rückwärts gehen. Ja, immer diesen, diesen Drive behalten, dass du ja, in der Mitte hältst. Well, they're happy with that opening round. In the Bursal corner and just telling him that the falling really is just kind of standing in front of him at the minute. He doesn't need to look too hard for him and that's a good example of it. Just walk forward, let his hands go and Fawnling was unable to do too much about it. I don't like that, Fawnling squaring his back foot up when coming forward with the right hand.
It's funny that kind of pose that he strikes Spurs, and when Hello, you see him in his boxing stance, stands from side on as we did from where we're seeing right then, he, he looks like a fighter from the 1930s almost. He holds that left hand, that half lead hand half. right out. But it's working very well with him. He's having a lot of success with that lead hand so far. He is. And Fulling just trying to inch forward there to make his own jab work, to get into range for it, but Bozel took his, took his feet back. Fulling's hand-to-feet coordination is not the best. He's throwing his shots and feet are following behind. That was a nice straight left hand there. He threw the almost a kind of right-hand lead there, Bozel. And then the left cross off the back of it, kind of a shift in, in a way, not quite, but kind of thing you see other fighters do. And he did it again there, actually. He just kind of turns that right shoulder in, squares up a bit. It's almost like a lead right hand and then throws that left in. Well, you see Sergei Kovalev do that a lot down the years. I'm not comparing Dominic Bozel to, to Sergei Kovalev, but you know what I mean. Stiff right hand there from Ford Link. This is warming up. And there's that left again, he just tucked it with the right hand and we could see the head just snap back there and he's doing some damage here at Burzel and Fawning has got to, he's got to work something out here and he's got to do it quite quickly because at the moment he's taking too much. The experience is uh, showing here, even in ring positioning. When Bozo is in a bad position, he knows how to manoeuvre himself back into a better position. And so much of boxing oh, is oh, based oh, on positioning and ring craft. Right. Step back. And again there, he's just within range. He knows exactly. Now Bozo was in a bad position and he's now ended up back in the centre. Well, down goes Thornling and the referee it's calling the knockdown there. There was a punch that started that, I'm sure, that sent it down towards the canvas. He then got in a slight tangle and touched down. It wasn't a really solid knockdown, but I think it was a right hand that just caused him to lose his balance. And that's a 10-8 round for Dominic Bursel, and he is really in control of this one at the moment. And Sven Forning is just looking a little bit lost. <laughs> And that's a happy corner. Yeah, immer mal ein paar Klare Aktionen, dann immer wieder mal to have that call, the knockdown. Yeah, and a, a back of the head shot, and you know, it's, uh, it's it's an illegal blow for a reason. I don't think it was done it uh, purposefully, but we'll see how our uh, Fongling makes adaptions in this round. Didn't really complain that Sven Fongling. I think he would have had the uh, grounds to have he, as you say, wasn't deliberate, but it certainly wasn't a clean shot. Punches around the back of the head. Uh, something we see too much of in professional boxing and referees don't, don't do enough about it in my opinion that wasn't really that kind of instance but all the same Bozel just inches forward with that front foot A low blow there from Fornling, so Bozel just been given a little bit of time to recover. What's interesting about watching Bozel so far, and I've watched him before, but when you watch somebody from ringside, it's different, is that he knows his method, doesn't he? As soon as he gets into the right kind of range, it's almost like he just flicks a switch, and off he goes, and he lets his hands go, and he commits to it. Yeah, and, and for me, Fornling needs to take that jab away from, from Bozil, and that will take away a lot of Bozil's offence because he sets everything up with that nice jab that he's got. So how does he do that? 
He needs to make a decision. He even needs to counter, allow Bozil to throw the jab and counter it and make it a uh, weakness for him. Or he needs to get his shots off and smother the distance, close the distance and make him fight at a shorter distance where he cannot use his height and reach and weight distribution advantage. <laughs> But like I say, it seems a big problem for me is Fulling's ring craft. When he gets into a good position, he doesn't know how to maintain it. Or it looks to me like he doesn't even realise he's in a good position. Well, both are just beginning to go Fulling a little bit. His confidence is high, and I think he clipped him with one there, a right hand as Fulling came in, and then he just fell onto Bozel's shoulder. That's a bit better from the Swede. Dipping low at the knees there, Bozel. Almost touched down with a knee, he's just covering up there, and that's the first time, but really, that Fawnling has put him into a shell. Again, Fawnling has allowed Bozil to get start, reset, back in the centre. He now has distance behind him if he needs to take his feet out. There you go, and allowing him to reset, but Bozil's got to... Fawnling's got to make the most of that positioning. Don't turn. Well, he's had a better final minute in this round, Thorning. It's not going to be enough to win the round, I don't think, but... Well, maybe, if he can put a few more together towards the end of it. But he's at least getting a bit of a foothold in the fight here, Thorning, which is what he needed. This will encourage him, certainly. Long right hand. And he just needed to step on him again there, because that landed not all that solid, but he pushed it back into the corner. Yeah, he's made an adaption, that was good to see, because if he didn't make an adaption, it only looked downhill from there, so he's, uh, he's made the adaption in the next round, definitely makes the next round interesting. Okay. Well, there's that jab. And that's worked well for him so far. Fulling started to, to close that distance up and use some variety, which is good. And it's, it's gave him a little bit of a foothold in the fight. But in between those combinations, he needs to be a little bit more physical with Bozil, manipulate him, manhandle him, and keep him in those positions where he doesn't have space behind him and he can make it a fight because it looks to me like that's his best chance in this fight. Again, the two of them just... And there's a cut opened up. Crash together, a clash of heads. Ooh, and those and heads again. again looking like they might come together. A little bit of blood up by the hairline there, Abozo. I don't know if that's been transferred or... It's come from somewhere else, but that was a good, rapid combination there from Bozo. And this is turning into, into a good, good fight. Long right hand there from Thornley, did get through. Well, it's around the left eye, that cut you picked up on it a while ago, Ben. You just needed him to turn around so we could get a look at it. Stop, stop! Stop. Mm. And it now, that really bothers me. Thornley's getting Bozo into a good position. Bozo's looking to reset, and Thornley's happy to bounce on the spot and allow him to reset and take his place back in the centre, you know? That, that's really poor ring craft. Just inching forward with that front foot, and again, the head's just kind of rubbing together on the inside. That cut and a bit of swelling on the corner of the left eye. I haven't seen any kind of indication from the referee. Might get one at the end of the round as to how it was caused, but it's a problem for Fawling. Fawling's problem is he's punching first and the feet are following after, and which, is, which is a problem because it's travelling with your punches and he's giving him an opportunity to run into Bozo's. Bozil shot. Smile for Bozil, who again just sticks out that jab. Good right hand on the inside for Bozil, and if that left eye is a problem for Thornley, if his vision is being impaired, then that's not going to help him, but that's a good... Needs to be more physical there. Too nice. It's a good combination for Thornley, looking to try and get his... Shots off. 
and the corner just beckoning him forward. I think they feel that when he puts Bozel under the gun a bit, Bozel doesn't really like it. Who does? But I think their feeling is that Bozel is an on-top fighter and that it is possible to affect his confidence here. And he's just tucking up there. I think he was maybe a little bit hurt there. And again, they're just ushering Thornling on. And this is an interesting round. Good right hand on the inside. But Thornling has taken some, some serious artillery off Bozel, and he's still coming forward. And Bozel now is struggling to keep him off. Nice one two there from Thornling. Right to the body from Thornley at the end of the round. On those last two rounds, rounds three and four, they're pretty tight. The first two rounds were definitely both the rounds. was a knockdown in there as well, but three and four, you could give them both the other way. Yeah, I think the, the fact, uh, the point that we brought up about both fighters coming into the ring dry definitely looked to have had an impact in the first couple of rounds for Thornling and he's growing into the fight, he's made an adaption and it's looking positive for him. It'll be interesting to see if he can keep that punch count up. But what he's telling him there is he wants them to try and keep it on the outside as much as he can, use that jab, find that distance that he did before and use those quick hands because he was catching Thornling on the, on the way in. But it's always interesting how 12-round fights can ebb and flow. Bozel made a good start and he was looking confident and he was finding Thornling and he could see him marking up a bit. But yeah. if you're the fighter on the end of that and it doesn't really hurt you and you realise you're going to have to do this the hard way, then that's exactly what you said at the start of the third round. Then the fact that you're still there can see your confidence build. It's a strange one. Yeah, the problem for me with Bozo is he has one defensive posture and that's a full guard when he's put under pressure at mid-range. He needs to vary that up. He needs to learn how to deal with mid-range a little bit better. He looks a little bit lost there for me. And it's something that Fungling needs to expose. And Dom Shields come out. Fornlings and Bozel has to go back to the neutral corner. Please, the most pieces. The second most pieces. Time in. Box. And they've done well with that cut in the corner between rounds. Doesn't look too bad, actually. I, I thought originally it might not be great. Problem for me with Fungling is he can be timed. Sometimes, like I say, he punches first and feet follow after, and that does give you an opportunity to get time. Well, he's caught him with a right hand there, Fawning, and then just got a little bit over eager, but again, Boozle just feet. goes into his shell, tucking Stop. up. He, he can't see what's coming at him there at all. You see fighters defending in different ways. You've got two who have their hands down all the time. They can see everything. They have to rely on their reflexes. Boozle is, is completely the other way around. Walks onto a right hand there. That was a decent left from Fawning as well. Better for Bozel as he steps forward. So he nearly got time with the right hand there, Fawning. But I think he's just happy with Sweet to try and walk through whatever he needs to walk through to get his own punches off. It's not. It's not the sweet science, really, but it doesn't have to be. No, 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 no. Bozo's just having a look at the referee there, and that's never a good sign. See, Fawning can't be getting walked back like that. He needs to be more physical there, and when he gets there with his punching, he needs to be a little bit more selective with his shots, a little bit more variety. That's so much better for Bozo. just puts his weight into a good jab and then sinks in the right hand. You can see what the corner think here, the falling corner away to my right. They are telling him, Bruno Basso is telling him all the time, just keep going forward, keep going forward, put him under pressure. He doesn't like it. And Thornley doing exactly that, is trapped him back in the corner there. And then, oh, a good right hand from Bozal. This is a terrific what fight, a great fight. Head towards <laughs> the middle rounds.
Left hand for Bozel and then just skates away to his left. Thornley just trying to get on top of him there. Dip low at the waist there, Bozel. The bell goes, and this is bruising stuff through five rounds. It really is, and he takes a little bit of a deliberate seat on the stool there, Bozel. And yeah. Dominic. Well, at this point, it's difficult to say, I think, which way this one could go. Bozo's body language will definitely be giving Fulling confidence. Sometimes that poker face can make the difference. Well, the caller was just saying there to Bozel that, that Fawning always needs a little break. He'll always step off every now and again. And when he does, you need to step on him. I mean, that's good advice, but that, that's, I mean, that's a hard way to win a fight. Every time the opponent looks to nick a little bit of a breather, you've got to make them work when they don't want to work. Yeah, and even if it's not physical work, it needs to be mental work. Even if you're just mentally making him work by having your front foot close enough and a little faint and a different look. Making him mentally work is still just as tiring as the physical work. Happy to throw the straight right hand there, Bozo, at the start of the round, and Thornley gets on top of him. And every now and again, Bozo just has a look at the referee. I mentioned that in the previous round, and I'm just not a fan of that. It doesn't send out the right message. It's almost like he's lost a little bit of focus here, Bozo. Possibly he thought this was going to be easy the way he was shaping up in the first couple of rounds and it hasn't turned out to be that way just got to get his concentration completely back and zone in lock into the fact that this is going to be long and hard the falling's already there I think mentally I think that's what he's prepared for good left hand there for Bozel falling's going back in a straight line with his head at the same height I'll tell you what's quite surprising is that we haven't had more head clashes because they really have come together strong a few times. There's that square in that back foot up again. It just got stuck, didn't he? His feet got completely stuck and Bozo was able just to let a couple go. Falling has had some success, but what he can't do is just... It's just wade in and throw punches apropos of nothing. Not at this level, you can't. He's been timed again there. And that's what he's doing at the moment. He's just chasing Bozel around here. There's not really enough thought going into this. And Bozel, as a result, is having a good round. The gun shield has come out again there, of Thornley. Gets both fighters a little bit of a break. Inside the final minute of round six, I'll be at the halfway point, and this has been bruising for both of them so far, damaging. You can see it from their faces, particularly Thornlings. Those were just on the borderline of range there, just trying to tempt something for Thornley, trying to draw him in, and there's that kind of reverse one-two again. Right hand followed by a really strong left cross almost. We just have another little shift in this round as well. Bozel has very much had the better of this one. Thornley just chasing him around the ring. Need variety and composure there. Bad position, he's walked himself back to the ropes as well. Good right hand there for Bozel. The and the blood coming from the cup again. Long lingering look from Bozel at Thorning as the, as the bell goes. He had a good round there, the German, and, and the Swede there falling. He was just a bit too gone ho wasn't he, in the way he was going about things. He, he's got to bring the heat, he knows that, but he was reckless there, and he's made to pay a good few times. He's given Bozo an opportunity to time him. I think that if he can add a few feints in, change his height, change his level, 
changes his uh, point of offense. Sometimes just shoot the body first, bring it upstairs, shoot upstairs first, bring it downstairs. Change his height with the attacks, and that'll prevent him getting timed. They want combinations from falling, that's what they're telling him. Bit of damage to that left eye. Just trying to deal with that as best they can, but the eye hasn't really closed, which is the which is the important thing for him, really. Midway through this, and we've had some shifts in the balance of the fight already. Bozo with a good start, Thornley replying handily in rounds three and four. Bozo just kind of taking the initiative back in that previous round. That's some good body punching to start the round. Haven't seen much of that from either of them. Lovely one, too. They brought them back nice and quick as well. That's what the corner were, were wanting from him. Finishes with the left of the body. Right hand from Brozel got through, but Thorning straight back in. Looks a bit low. That looked low. Okay. No reaction there from Fawning at all. Marking under the right eye now for Fawning as well. Nodding, nodding. Now in a position like that, Bozell's holding. Fawning needs to get his head in a better position to be able to push his hips back, create space between the two of them to be able to work. Decent combination there from Fawning. Looking to go to the body a bit more in this round so far. Every time Bozell lands anything half decent, the crowd love it, of course, and that's something that the judges are going to have to make sure that they block out the ringside. Oh, beautiful. Fantastic setup and disguise before as well. Fantastic left hook. Tremendous left hand out from Bozalis. Kind of waving that left hand around like a wand and then just whipped it up the centre. Fongling's flailing away when he gets it in position to punch. He really needs to pick his punches, add some variety to his work. He was doing that at the start of the round and it's just come apart a bit as the rounds progress deep into the final minute of round seven now. Flailing is exactly the right word to describe it. He just gets a bit too loose, a bit too open. A Brazil it's very much a compact stop, stop. kind of fighter, isn't he? Yes, and if, if, if every shot stop is coming holding, round the side with the same punch pattern, it's very but easy to defend. When you add variety, it becomes a lot harder to defend. Good straight right hand there from Thornley though, just before that, got his right glove up to the fence well, as well. He's starting to move his head as he's coming forward as well, take his head off the centre. He's going to need a bit more of that. Thornley looking to try and get to work on the ropes right at the end of the round, and again it's another good round, plenty of action, and Thornley, he finished it strongly. And they're both making an argument. In these rounds, Bozel looks, well, he looks the fresher of the two when you look at their, their faces, more damage has been done to Fawning, but that's not how you judge fights. He's that left hand. Beautiful setup. Gave him different looks, different looks, different looks, set it up and timed it beautifully. Well, that was a classy shot of the fight so far. You get the feeling with Bozel that he's just got to make sure that he wants this as much as Fawning. I'm not saying that anything so far has made him look like he doesn't want it, but Fawning is going to bring absolute maximum effort here. This is sheer willpower from him. The more technically accomplished fighter of the two is Bozel. He cannot allow himself to get outworked at any stage because that really, for me, is the only way that Fawning can, can win this fight. But it is 
it is conceivable. For me, the only success that, that, that sorry, the time that Fawnling has success is when Bozo gives him a, a, a full guard look. Defensive position of a full right guard. Ahead. It's giving Fawnling the opportunity to flail away with those attacks and shots. Just like this. Right on two, and he just buffets him back to the ropes. And really, as I said before, when he does that, he can't see a thing, so he just has to wait until Fawnling stops punching. And Fawnling has just got to try and... But look at Fawnling, he's, he's allowed himself to reverse rolls. He's now got his, had his back to the ropes, and Fawnling, um, Bozo was back in the centre. Just inching forward there, Fawnling, looking for that left hand. Good stiff jab there for Bozo. As Fawnley came in, but he's putting a lot of effort into this round, midway through it, Fawnley. He really has poured it on in the first 90 seconds. Can he sustain it? If he can, this could be a good round for him. The blood just flowing from the eye again, but he's stepping forward, stepping on to Bozel. Just isn't really giving him any opportunity to get anything off in this round so far. Puts him into that shell, and he's kept him there. Now, the problem is there's nothing wrong with a full guard. It's a good defensive posture. But the great fighters that use a full guard do not leave their head in the same position with a full guard. They will change their height, adjust their distance. Bozo's good at adjusting his distance with his feet, but he's not good at adjusting his distance and head position. When he's in a full guard, he sits there with his hands wrapped up around his head. It's way too inviting. He needs to be adjusting his position, adjusting his head position. Well, that was a good left hand there from Thorning and then a good right hand down the middle as well. And this has been a dominant, dominant round, the most dominant we've seen for a while in this fight. And Bozo just looking to try and fire back off the ropes into the last 30 seconds. And it was about time that he gave some kind of response. These kinds of rounds are really interesting because you get the feeling that Thorning has he's really tried to put a dent in Bozo in this round and he's won the round but I'm not sure if he's really managed to do that or not, because it's been a big effort from him. He's just taken something out of the tank. 100%, and that's right, if he hasn't taken too much out of him and he's exerted a lot of energy, if Bozo's done that on purpose and smart, he'll be starting this next round sharply. He had a spring in his step there, though, Paul, as he made his way back towards the corner. Big fight, biggest fight of his career, biggest fight of Bozo's career. He can take you to... To new places in terms of stamina and work rate and being able to dig deep and find things that you didn't know you had. Well, a fight like this can boil down to heart. Who wants it more? Who's willing to dig deeper? Well, that's the beautiful thing about boxing, one of the many, that it's one of the few sports really where just pure desire and willpower still counts for a lot even at the top level even at the very top Especially level at the top level you can talk about technique all you want and it's very very important but often if you're not made of the right stuff you're not going to make it and again, he's just having a look at the referee there, Bozil, and that's not good for me. Fawnling just let his hands go there, maybe hit him with a little bit of a forearm at one point, and then he pushes down on the back of his head, and Bozil, he definitely can't start to feel sorry for himself at any point in here. And that's kind of the point I was making a little bit earlier, just about him, his mentality. Sometimes maybe looks a little bit despondent. If he doesn't like what Fawning's doing, then do now, it back if the referee's not doing anything about it. 100%. And I know it's becoming later on in the fight now. Legs will be feeling tired. But for me, if Bozo can take half a step back and let Fawning rush into a shot, his technique's starting to go out the window, I think he could find a big shot. But he needs to keep his composure. No. And be smart. But he's holding his feet, trying to time the shot. And Fawnling's committing to the shot a little bit more and beating him to it. He needs to take half a step back, take the distance away, and time him on. Well, they both landed. 
good right hands, 10, 20 seconds ago. Thornley just clips him around the back of the head there on the blind side of the referee. Sticks out that left hand there, Bozel. Looks for a right up the middle. Good jab. Good jab and then just steps off. Stop holding, stop holding, Bozel. There into that guard. Thornley had a chance there just to let his hands go. He's not let that eye bother him at all. Sven Thornling, and it's not looked great from an early stage. is <laughs> just allowing himself to be outworked here. Took that last round sport falling 100% and he's taking this one too. And that's a good combination. He really doesn't know. He needs to smother Fawling's attack here, give him no room to get his combinations off. But unfortunately, he has zero physical and clinch game. Goes that left hand again, that kind of reverse one too that I pointed out. That gets through pretty much every time, that straight left. Almost like a southpaw left hand. Thornley just dipping his head as he comes in. But that's another good round for the Swede by my estimation. And I don't think there's going to be a lot in this. I haven't scored it round by round, but from where I'm sitting, this could be tight. Bozel's the, the home fighter, of course. Always worth remembering that. Not that it should ever make any difference, but... Well, we learned about that one with the uh, Deontay Wilder Tyson Fury fight. Indeed you did. That's the problem there, as you can see, Fawling coming out in a straight line, like we said. There's not much change of fight or adjustment of head position from both fighters here. Not much of a physical or inside clinch, clinch game from both fighters. But he's certainly making for an entertaining fight. 100%. And Dirk Zemski there just giving Bozel a slap on the backside as he's sending back out for the round. I think they're telling him they're trying to light a bit of a fire under, underneath him that what he cannot do in these final three rounds is allow himself to be outworked. If he's got the superior stop, skills, stop, stop. he has to Watch bring them head. to bear. Watch your head. But you've got to earn the right to fight by competing. And the thing has really brought it. That's a good right hand there from Bursal. Just teeing it up with a jab and waiting for Thornley to come in and then let it go. Stop. That's better, look. Stop. Stop. See now, it might not be exactly by the rules, but he's engaging in a clinch and not allowing Thornley to get his work off at that distance. Beautiful, timed him. Beautifully there, brilliant shot. He needs a little bit more of that, as I called for a couple of rounds ago. Very, very solid right hand. He just stuck out and that left. And another cut underneath the right eye. That swelling underneath the right eye is just split with that right hand, and he just held out the left hand, and again, he's done it there, just measuring the distance, and then send it through, and it's making me wonder whether Thornling is completely able to see it coming. And the one-two is really working for him in this round, Bozel, and he's done some damage. And you can see that Thornling is... He's trying to keep it together in there, but he's taken some stick in this round. That's a lovely one-two there, there from Sven Thornling, and knocks Bozel back into the ropes. Sneaks a left hand round the back of the guard as well. And just when I thought the German was really getting on top here, Thornley just pushes him back. 
deep breath taken there for Bozel. Every time he looks out from that tight guard, he just sees those fists, those gloves of Thornley just raining down towards him. And he has got big heart, this fighter, this Swede. He really has. Bozer will want to finish with the momentum in this round. He's done the higher quality work in this three minutes. Stop, stop, stop. And face is an absolute mess as he just looks to land the left hand right on the bell. Well, a couple to go, the doctor just Getting up on the ring apron there just to have a good look. Well, they're trying to tell him that he needs to try and move his head a bit more on the way in, but that, it's true, but it's a bit late for that now. Now that was beautifully timed. That that lead hand, it not only measured the distance, it also blinds the vision of Fong Lee. And he ran straight into that one. Which I did point out, I think that that is a weakness in Fong Lee. He can be timed, sometimes he'll punch first and feet will follow. Well, two to go, six more minutes. It's the kind of fight you don't really want it to end because it's been such a good watch right from the start, slightly cagey opening round as you usually see, but after that there's been a lot of punches thrown and there's been a lot landed, the work rate's been high no, for no, both stop, of them, stop, 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 stop. it's threatened to get messy at times but it's never taken the edge off it in terms of how good it's been to watch. Keeps the overhand right, there's Thornley, and then just as he pulled back, he caught the right hand himself. Bozo tried to land the uppercut and just pushes Thornley onto his back. No knockdown, no knockdown. He doesn't look fantastically stable though, Bozo. No, he doesn't. The fact that he was able to be pushed over like that is not a great sign. Bozo just getting onto the double jab there. And he looks a bit shaky here for me. Opened up with a left hand. Big right hand and it jumps the referee and waves it over. What a finish from Bozo. Absolutely terrific stuff. And you called it right there, Ben. When he got back to his feet, having been pushed over it for the first time, he just looked a little bit shaky. And he could see it, couldn't he? Bozo could see it because he was straight on him. And that was a really good, clinical, accurate finish. And he's done what he needed to do. It was a terrific fight. A big, big gut check for both of them. I feel for him a bit, Paul Ling in the red corner, to be honest. Bozo, you would say, is a technically more accomplished of the two. But he put such a Herculean effort in there, Sven Fornling. One thing but to ultimately, take ultimately, it was just too much damage. Yes, and one thing to take into consideration, Dominic Bozo's had 30 fights. Sven Fornling's had 16, yeah. you know. He will come back and he'll learn from that and he'll be an improved fighter from that. He'll definitely learn from that. And I do think massively that Bozo's experience and round management played a huge impact on that fight. But I must give credit to Fawning, showed a lot of heart. And what a fantastic fight. It was tremendous. It was absolutely tremendous. And he'll take that WBA interim title now and also Fawning's IBO World Light Heavyweight title. And, and this is a big night for him because yeah. he had a good win against Enrico Kohling. Oh. But I think he'd had a lot taken out of him by Artur Baturbiev, to be honest, Kohling, by the time Bozel met him prior to that his previous really tough fight well he lost it against Karo Murat when he won the European title against Suhai Demchenko no disrespect to Demchenko but I've seen him fight and that was a bit of a touch to be honest for a European title and then the other defence against Timmy Schaller he's proved something tonight as we watch the replay of the finish he's proved something to himself and to others that in a real dirty dog fight because that's what it was at times he can dig in and he can get it done
Yeah, and fantastic to see Benedict Perdiao of SES Sports go over and uh, check on Sven Fornling, who put a hell of a lot into that performance. Well, it's an unbelievably competitive division up at the top end. That we know. Bivol is the WBA super champion. Pascal, Pascal, the WBA regular champion. This was a WBA interim, and they may get a shot at one of those two. They may move into the regular title. Depends what Pascal does. Baturbiev, of course, has got the titles with the WBC and the and the IBF after beating Gavostik and Canelo Alvarez has got the title with the WBO. So, I mean, it's as tough as the division gets, really, at a, a world level. And he will look onwards after this and enjoy this first, Dominic Bozel. But there are some absolute beasts waiting at the top end of that 175 pound division. But you have to be ambitious. He was a number one with the WBA. Now he's the interim champion and he's got an IBO world title too. Not regarded as a proper world title, if you like, by most people. It's the four other governing bodies that seem to get the kudos in that respect, but he won't care about that. Not tonight. And Fornling, well, this will be difficult for him to take. It's interesting to see how, how, how much he marked up. And I did say when they showed the way in there that he looked very dry um, at the way in And maybe it could be his uh, facial structure, but it's definitely something to look at because he's, uh, he's got three or four cuts there um, on his face, which could potentially be due to dehydration. And the first one opened up quite early on too but he managed to, he managed to cope with it. But Boza was under pressure tonight, he was under pressure because this is his, this is his home turf, and he's well supported. There's a good crowd in here, German boxing domestically, going through a little bit of a tough time at the moment. They don't have any world champions. I would say they still don't because he's a WBA interim champion. Yeah. But at the same time, this is a shot in the arm for boxing and in Germany, and you are under pressure when you box at home in front of this kind of a crowd and, and he's delivered. Yes, and what a fantastic fight as well on top of that. A fantastic fight and a great effort from both fighters. Well, all sorts of people in the ring. It's amazing how many people manage to get in the ring at the end of a fight. I'm not quite sure they all need to be there, but... Ja, meine sehr verehrten Damen und Herren, Ladies and Gentlemen, einen großen Applaus, Big Applause für both Fighters on this evening. Well, Sven Fornling, a little bit unsteady, just been taken down the steps there. He's going to be checked out by the doctor. That's why he's leaving the ring. He's not, he's not flouncing out in a fit of peak. I just want to make that absolutely clear. His sportsmanship has been superb tonight. But they need to get him backstage and get him looked at. Meine sehr verehrten Damen und Herren, Sieger dieses Kampfes durch K.O. der elften Runde nach einer Minute zwölf und damit neuer IBO World Champion und Interims WBA World Champion. Hier ist der Mule. 